Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter. We are so happy to be present with you this morning. Let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we come to you this morning, continuing on our faith journey. Let us feel your presence. We come here as a community offering you this time of worship as we continue to grow in our faith formation. We continue to grow on the journey of being disciples. God, we ask that you just continue to be present with us and make yourself known to us in the ways in which we will understand. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning, church, and peace be with you. If you are overjoyed with the arrival of spring, or if you are suffering terribly with your spring allergies, peace be with you. If you are feeling hopeful about our future, or if you are still overcome with anxiety and worry, peace be with you. If you are lonely or saddened or unsure, Peace be with you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are welcome here as a part of the body of Christ, and you are loved. And the Holy One is here with me and with you in our hearts and in our minds. And the Holy One in me greets the Holy One in you. The Christ in me greets the Christ in you. So let us share the sacred peace of Christ with one another.
Good morning and happy Sunday. It is good to be with you today. This is the time in our service that we spend with our children. I wonder if you know your parents' voice. If they were in a different room or a different place and you couldn't see them and they called to you, would you know it was them? I bet that most of you would. Do you know your sibling's voice? Most of us have pretty distinctive voices. I know I do. And when I talk to people, they can usually tell it's me, just by my voice. In today's story, in the scripture, uh, God is being compared to a shepherd. A shepherd who has their sheep out in the fields, and the shepherd has a good relationship with their sheep. And when they call their sheep, their sheep trust them enough to come to them, and they know them by their voice. And it got me thinking about how, when we have a good relationship with someone, we trust their voice, because we know that it is a loving voice, and it is going to guide us in the ways that we should go. The Bible is like God's voice, and we can listen to it. It is a loving voice that tells us what we should be doing in life and guides us in the way that we should be living. This week, I want you to listen for voices. Voices that you trust, voices that you love, and then you can spend some time in your Bible listening to another voice that loves you, God's voice. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, kids and grown-ups, let's sing our Easter Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks for singing with me. Today's scripture reading is a familiar one, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I read about an actor who was receiving an award and after giving his speech, he was asked to recite the 23rd song. With great flair and articulation, he presented very well with enthusiasm and zeal. He artfully, artfully recited the gift of this well-known song. Later that evening, another woman was asked to make closing remarks. She asked for forgiveness and explaining to the audience she didn't know what to say, so the only thing that she could think to say was to also say the 23rd song. With a dry mouth and a shaky voice, she opened up, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And she continued reciting and she stumbled here and there. It was clear she was skipping words and little phrases here and there. She knew she wasn't reciting the 23rd song correctly and she pulled back her voice and as she pulled back her voice you would watch the people in the audience lean in to her when she finished 
there was not a dry eye in the room. As the people gathered to leave, the actor comes over and he approaches the woman and he gives her a compliment and he hugs her. He says to her softly in her ear, he knew the song, but she knew the shepherd. Like the woman in the story, our scripture this morning is about knowing the difference between knowing the song and knowing the shepherd. This sense of knowing is more about heart work than it is about memory and about performance or doing this mind kind of work. The imagery of the shepherd can be a dusty, antique, antique relic of the past. It's an image that would have been well known by the people of the countryside around Jerusalem. It was that very same countryside where the stony soil would have been the shelter for wolves and a trap for unsteady sheep, where steep cliffs fell suddenly to the sea below, which required good shepherds with staffs and rods to be courageous and tender. With all the danger of those rough plains, the shepherd had to work at knowing their sheep and ensuring that their sheep knew them. It was vitally important that the shepherd used his voice to nurture his relationship with the sheep so that they could build a trusting relationship. It was his voice which guided and protected the sheep along with the shepherd's strength whenever the sheep would happen to slip. The shepherd's voice drew the missing, the frightened, and the wounded back home. Sheep following someone's voice almost sounds funny and odd, don't you think? Especially in our culture, any indication that someone would let a voice lead them or they follow a voice that they're hearing, we presume there must be a mental disease or disorder. But if we really think about it in many ways, we are living in a mental disease culture and world. And when I say that, I mean we are always letting voices overwhelm us and demand, plead and lure us attempting to control our minds and our hearts to do something specific, to go to this particular store or to purchase this particular thing. We are a culture that is always looking to fill the space with voice or voices that will place demands upon us seeking to solicit us. So in that sense, we tend to be a people who listen to voices in one way or another. Can we ever rid ourselves of those voices? No, I don't think so. I think one of our greatest struggles is to discern where is the voice of God in all of this? How do we hear our shepherd calling us to safety, a safety of spiritual well-being? How do we separate the voices from our culture and our minds and listen for the one voice that matters so that we can become centered in wholeness so that we can defend ourselves from the multiple cultural voices that chase us to hear only the one voice. If we look at the 23rd Psalm written by David when he was a young shepherd with a newness and with intentional listening, we may discover some hints of meaning. This Psalm could help us understand better God's movement and what God says in our lives. As the shepherd leads, 
comforts, restores, anoints, prepares, and sometimes when we are unruly and inflexible, the shepherd makes us rest. Here the shepherd makes room, allowing for us to be encouraged to grow, to stretch, and move towards spiritual wellness. The shepherd does not drag us, diminish us, attack us, blame us, or violate us in order to get his way or focus us into being anything other than what we are. Rather, this could be received in a new way as an invitation from the shepherd's voice, which invites and waits and companions us by our side. There are three places where the voice can be found. Beside the still waters and the green pastures. Interestingly, we don't have to wait for refreshing water and a place to rest for our spirits and our body until the end of the day. We don't have to wait for that after we put in so many hours in the day. This is not the last, but the first that's given to us. It is where we rest and restoration can be found. The voice yearns for us to have this rest. What would it look like to be able to rest and there was no requirement of you needing to do anything first? Rest for the soul because without it, there is no growth. We're unable to birth creativity. Without living water and rest, how can we sustain the journey? How often do we push aside the still voice of God inviting us to rest? How often do we push that voice to the side inviting us to restoration for solitude and for centering? and for the coolness of the living water, but rather accept the invitation of the cultural voices which placed so many demands on our time. The stillness of God's voice is always with us, even during all the chaotic noise which urges us and leads us and sometimes causes fatigue and illness. It makes us lie down to rest in the green pastures beside the still waters. But it is not a permanent resting place. The voice seeks to help us to the right paths that will lead us home. The voice will companion us amidst the slippery slopes and the rocks and the dangers, helping to redirect us towards home, towards physical well-being, and spiritual wholeness and spiritual well-being. And then finally, we are assured that the shepherd's voice in our most frightening place in the valley of the shadow, the valley of evil, the valley where harm and hopelessness and death threatens to defeat us, we all can witness to the shepherd's voice here after living out and living through this pandemic as we witness so much loss from this virus. What would it look like if to the world and live the good news that we can be assured that God is with us in the valley and that the voice will always be able to sustain us, rescue us, and heal us because God has been there already in the valley. The shepherd has been sacrificed by the violent and unpredictable forces of evil and pain. And that experience as the lamb so changed and shaped God as the shepherd. 
God will never again forsake the sheep because God knows, God understands, and God feels the power of the valley. Remember amidst all the voices, there is a voice desiring for us to lie down, be still by the waters, yearning to lead us with the vision on the paths of righteousness, companioning with us in the darkest valleys of our lives. But we must be willing to be the sheep that are willing to do the work of listening. Amen. This is the time where we share our joys and concerns. If you have a joy or a concern, I ask, would you please type it in the chat box so that we can continue to hold your concerns and your joys in prayer throughout this week. Let us turn our hearts to God. With boldness, let us offer our prayers to the shepherd of our souls. We pray for the church in every place. Gather us together and make us one, one in ministry and mission to the world. 
so that they will be one flock, one shepherd. We pray for the nations of the world. Anoint all leaders with your wisdom so that they will use their power to help the, power, the poor and defend the vulnerable. We pray for this community. Strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick. Welcome the outcasts and help sisters and brothers in need. We pray for friends and loved ones. Comfort all who are suffering. Walk with them through dark valleys and restore them body, mind, and soul. Loving God, by the power of your spirit, help us to keep your commandment and to love one another with the love of Jesus, in whose holy name we pray. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to the close of our service this morning. We have enjoyed being with you. We hope you felt the presence of God, the presence of the Spirit. And may you go out into the world. Go out into the world to make a difference. Open your heart and love thy neighbor. Amen. <laughs>